Welcome to Lincoln Fire and Rescue on LNK TV. I'm your host, Dale Johnson, and today with me is Lincoln Fire Chief Michael Despain. Hello, Chief. Hello, Dale. Good to see you again. Good to be back. We are going to look through the 2017 annual report on today's show. <coughs> Plenty of performance indicators in the pages for this annual report. And without getting too deep into the weeds, Chief, uh, talk about the process of putting this together. How do you use an annual report? I know you present it to city officials and the public gets to see it. Right. We'll see some of it today. Well, if it helps, today we're getting a sneak peek because this hasn't been published ah. yet. It's it's about 90% done. Uh, but the statistics that we're going to look at have already, city city halls already looked at it. They've under, they understand it. In fact, some of what we're going to present, we did in a... Uh, a different presentation that uh, the viewers could look at that's much longer and you got it's it's many hours long we're, we're going to be much shorter today but you know the purpose of the annual report is a couple things one is we're accountable to uh, the community in terms of outcomes and performance like what did you do what did you say you were going to do how much of it that you did so we want to report that so they understand what level of service they're getting um, what do we do right what do we still having challenges with Sometimes in the annual report, we'll have some data like personnel that retired and hired and, you know, promotions and some of that. And some of that's for us for historical, you know, documentation. We can look back and go, when did something happen? Significant events uh, for historical purposes. Uh, there's even some data that's probably a little complicated, uh, probably a little boring to look at. But there's other agencies that would compare to us or they would want to analyze us. And so, you know, the back of the report might have some exhibits that have the... Uh, you know, the references that no one would want to read unless they were having a rough nice sleeping at night and they wanted some material to help that. Uh, but so it serves a couple of purposes. But, you know, our goal is uh, for the average reader, uh, once this comes out, we'll have it on the website or if they have a hard copy is you can read the first three or four pages and tells you basically everything you need to know. All the detail is kind of followed in the back. Mm -hmm. so. And I know you were forward thinking looking individual. I went back to the 2016 and on there are some 2017 uh, goals that you had for yeah. the coming year and kudos. Yeah, most we, of, we got most a couple of things met. done. Yeah, uh, but it's like football. If you're not keeping score, then mm -hmm. it's just practice. So mm -hmm. yeah, so we like uh, having some data to look at and, and something to shoot for. So the whole organization is rowing in the same direction and getting where we want to go. All right, let's start with some right. accomplishments and we have some slides to go along with with our comments right. today on the show. So we have a couple to share, but I think this is like the best one. So I'm just gonna mm -hmm. go out with a bang here. Uh, you know, we saved um, probably 40 to 45 people from fires, uh, cardiac uh, events, sudden cardiac arrest, a, a number of things. Now, not all of them survived, because sometimes even the best we do, they, they may not survive. But we can say today that at least 37 people are alive today. Uh, because of the actions of Lincoln Fire and Rescue, whether it was a uh, trapped by fire, uh, 17 were, were trapped by fire that were uh, alive today. Uh, 20 were cardiac related that uh, they are now healthy and you know neurologically intact back to work and that's that's huge and so on the graph here you can see a couple pictures of things that we uh, were, were doing and in, in one in the central picture here you can see where uh, one individual was stuck in her bathroom and she couldn't get out the door and the window was too small to cut to get out I mean to get out normally so the crews just made a door for her and she walked right out and she's fine today and um, it was a good move by the crews. Turned a window into a door. Yep. Uh, some other stats that are a little more, may not seem as interesting, but I think they kind of grow in interest is we saved a lot of pets too. Mm -hmm. And you might think that that's not that big of a deal, but for many people, pets are like their kids. And so that's a big deal. So saved lots of pets, lots of lives. I think that's some of the things we want to brag most Chief, about. Chief, in the newsroom, when pets are saved and people yeah. too, the owners, more comments are made about the efforts yep. to put, I've even seen firefighters putting oxygen masks over the face yep. of a pet to yep. try to save it, smoke inhalation problems and the right. like. So a good example would uh -huh. be if I talk about uh, how many people were saved, there's some heads shaking, but when I talk about how many puppies were saved, in the back of the room you'll hear the audience, oh, the puppies uh -huh. were saved. So uh -huh. I think that's kind of interesting. Uh -huh. Well, performance indicators will continue here with the 2017 uh, report. Uh -huh. uh, cardiac survival rate, you and I, Chief, have talked about this a lot, and every time I bring it up, I'm impressed constantly by it, and I really do hope that the community 
grasps the, the, the accomplishments that are going on at many different levels right. by many professional people in order to uh, accomplish these right. remarkable numbers. They are, and, and these stats, we, I, I, I went back a couple of years to show this, to show we weren't always, uh, we weren't always doing that well. There were some years where we struggled a little bit, but somewhere around 2014, the agency really started to take a hard look at all the systems required to do that right, and as you could see, starting in 2015, and we've just been making tremendous progress in terms of the service we provide to the, to the community. Service that counts, I mean, surviving neurologically intact, so hearts better, brain is intact, you can kind of go back to your normal normal thing, I, normal life, I think that's important. Is there, and I know the answer, but I'll ask it anyway, is there a single thing between 2015 and 2016 that resulted in that huge spike from 43% to 77%? Well, uh, you know, these are, <coughs> these are small numbers, so just a few saves will skew it a little bit, mm -hmm. so we kind of put that caveat in there, but there's a lot of, that goes in here. You know, people that use PulsePoint and they are willing to do hands-only CPR, early 911, early defibrillation, that's, there's people alive because people did that. There's also, uh, our dispatchers do a great job of trying to figure out what's going on and give them instructions to provide care before we get there. Of course, our medics, I'll have to brag on the medics a little bit, but our medics do a great job, our firefighters. Um, but then the next step is they go to the hospital and the hospital doesn't waste a second. They get in there, they know the patient's coming in and they provide some of the best care. So it's a system. So we can't take 100% uh, credit for this. We have to kind of give credit to, our, to the team that helps make it happen. But the customer wins, the, the taxpayer wins when we have numbers like this. I knew it wasn't just one thing. It's a yeah. layer of things. And it's, there's a lot going into it. Again, look at that number. Uh, viewers from 43 percent to 77 percent you you speak about this to other fire chiefs and fire marshals around right. the country and it's an amazing statistic that right. th this high because the national average as you can see is in the up low 30s right uh that area and we're in the mid to upper 70s yeah yeah all right uh Another statistic that we'll, we'll look at here in the uh, 2017 annual report has to do with Lincoln Fire and Rescue uh, uh, with its CPR and, uh, and its performance. You have a goal, right. that, that's your baseline, and you're always looking to, to, to push the number higher. Well, that other statistic we looked at is the cardiac survival rate. A lot of factors go into it. We try and figure out what's the factor that we control the most, so we make sure we're doing our part. So if there's a system problem down the road, we know, well, we're doing our part, where is it Where is it breaking down? But this just shows when our crews get on scene, the number one thing to keep the brain neurologically intact is good circulation. And so our goal is, uh, you know, make sure that that patient, from the time we touch that patient till they get into the hospital, at least 80% of the time or better, they're getting good perfusion with circulation. And you can see uh, somewhere around 2013 and 14, we really found just a few things to even tweak that higher. So we may end up changing the goal eventually. But as we see here, this is one of the devices that we invested in. Uh, this is the Lucas device, which is a mechanical compression machine, that's $30,000 <laughs> for one of those machines. So they're pricey, but I mean, they have helped make just that little bit of extra difference in terms of people surviving a heart attack, um, you know, in neurologically intact. Now the way that works, as, you, as, you, as we're looking at the slide, is the patient is, is in between and yep. the, the white uh, discs up above are the compression, yep. is the compression it's machine. It's like a, a plunger that just starts uh -huh. You know, on the chest. Com compressing that chest. There's a hard backboard behind it so it gets good good uh, circulation. And, you know, a good example would be if you just did average CPR, you know, just the person doing CPR. Um, if you stop doing that, it, it takes about 30 to 40 seconds before of pumping to get the heart to prime again to move. So every time you stop, it, it, uh, you almost lose 30 seconds of any good perfusion even after you've started again. So this stops all those delays. We can move patient, we can do all kinds. That, that will stay on the patient all the way into the ER, all the way into procedures till the hospital's ready to take it off uh, just to keep the patient circulated. And you would think, why would you stop CPR as a professional? But if you're on the third floor of an apartment building, how are you yeah. going to walk down stairs, take corners, yeah. uh, get out of other people? You, yeah, it has to be stopped. Yeah. Well, and sometimes we, we only have so many people that can do CPR, and it's a tiring 
if you had to do that for 30 minutes, you'd be retired. I mean, yeah, we have some pretty strong, able firefighters, but you know, 10 or 15 minutes into a call, they're they've all rotated through and they're getting tired because it's it's hard to keep a pace and they, uh, the to do it the right way. As high on the priority list as saving lives, there's saving property yeah. too. And yeah. that's, that's pointed out in the annual report. Yeah, so uh, we are happy to report that uh, we saved over $400 million in property and contents from fire. That means uh, the, the, the property before the fire was calculated, the contents before the fire were calculated. We figured out what was lost to fire, so wherever we stopped it, whatever was less, what's the value of that? Now, when we look back over time, we can see that we've done fairly well in, in um, protecting that value. The blue uh, line here is our annual budget in comparison. So it's kind of like, what's the return on investment for the amount of money you pay for Lincoln Fire and Rescue Fire Services? But the point I'd like to make in 2017, where you see that the value saved is like 10 times the amount of the cost of providing service, what that doesn't tell you is that's just the brick and mortar, you know, property contents value. It doesn't take into account how many people in a, in a business, for example, how many people kept their job, got paid, taxes to the city, sales tax, property tax, service to the community, you know, circulation of money. You know, I would argue that it could be the economic value, depending on what burned or what didn't burn. You know, a, a vacant home, probably not as much. We burned down Kawasaki, that's a huge uh, industrial complex in Lincoln, that's a huge impact to the city. Um, but I would argue that the value back to the economy is probably another five to ten times what you see there in terms of what it did for the economy. So that's the value that we try and try and bring to the table. Now commercial property owners are very, very happy to see that statistic. Yeah, well, and they should be even more happy with uh, the ISO rating, which has helped improve some of insurance our insurance policy rates too. So, um, but I think if we continue on and look at cost of Lincoln Fire and Rescue, just break that down. What's in it for me as a taxpayer? You, you, you live in town, I live in town, we pay taxes. Um, of all the taxes you pay, they, they go to multiple different areas, but the portion that goes just for Lincoln Fire and Rescue is about $113 per person, per year. Um, that's sales tax, that's property tax, that's all that together. If you just did property tax, it'd be about 40% of that but uh, that's the rate. But when we look at comparable agencies, meaning agencies of like size, like structure, like services, within about a five or 600 mile radius, um, you can see we're pretty competitive in terms of our cost to provide the same or higher uh, level of service. Um, and another interesting note is even if you look at the rural providers around us, say a volunteer fire agency, um, and, and they're volunteer, but there's still a cost to operate that fire agency. They still have insurance and equipment and training and, and overhead and those kind of things. Uh, their costs are typically between about 130 and 170 for our region. So we're even cheaper per person than some of our rural providers on a per person cost basis. I'm doing the math in my head and $113 a year, viewers will know if I'm wrong or not, but that's about 35 cents a day. Well, I'd you have think to, it's a it's a dollar every do three math. days, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so, so it's it's a cheap it's a cheap check to have to write. Yeah, especially when it's saving, you know, uh, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a year on your insurance, mm -hmm. depending on where you live. So if you live in the city uh, and you move outside the city, a lot of factors go into how much your cost of living is. But insurance will go up by about six hundred to a thousand dollars a year. So not a bad, not a bad exchange rate. People think of LFR, they think of fire, but 80% or so of calls through LFR are for medical related and that sends the ambulance out onto the streets. Right. The important factor is response time, getting there in plenty of time to save the patient. Well, up to this point, uh, we got to brag a little bit about all the things we were doing right. Here's where we are still having some challenges. Um, this graph just shows our response time to those medical calls. Um, again, we only have six ambulances, sometimes seven, depends on what day of the week it is and how we're staffed. Um, our goal is to provide, uh, you know, an, an, an ambulance, you know, on scene within eight minutes, 90% of the time. As you can see, we're, we're really struggling, especially in uh, the last two or three years um, to do that. We have some solutions moving forward, but one of the biggest issues with this is uh, just enough medics. And, and I've 
shamed myself on TV many a times of asking, you know, for people to, you know, consider going into that field so we can, you know, recruit from a, a bigger applicant pool to fill those positions. But that's one of the issues is just being able to put additional ambulances in service. It's just, it's difficult uh, to ask, you know, the paramedics to do all this work and then on your days off, come back and work more. And, and that's what we struggle with until we get enough medics. Everyone in their job strives to make the m most use of their time, to be efficient. You know, people can relate to this, whether you're, whether you're selling shoes, whether you're flipping burgers, whether you're rescuing, whether right. you're a paramedic or a firefighter. But there, there comes a point where in your effort to be efficient, you can become inefficient by cutting corners or not doing your task quite as effectively as you could. Right. And, and that's something obviously LFR is not going to do, but I'm trying to make, make this relatable to <clears throat> viewers who are watching us today. Think of yourself trying to become efficient, but then you get to a point where you've Diminishing re returns. Diminishing returns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's one of the things that we're struggling with. Well, one, a, another issue is the fact that the city is growing. More people require yep. more demands on LFR. Yeah, in fact, uh, this next slide demonstrates, you know, one of the challenges we have is population growth versus calls for service. So it would be one thing if for every person we add, you know, there were a, a, an equal number of percentage of calls. But as you can see from this, just in the last, you know, five or so years, the population growth versus the call volume is call volume is, you know, three times the, uh, the population growth. And so that just means that if we have a three or four or five, 10% increase in population, that's a almost 40% increase in the number of calls. And so this has us worried a little bit moving forward. Some of this is demographic, uh, you know, aging baby boomers, more reliability, uh, more people relying on the 911 system to provide their emergency medical care versus their primary care physician or urgent care or whatever. So this, this is a little bit challenging for us. And, and another one is just the growth of the city. Um, this is the population growth. This is the square miles added to Lincoln since uh, 1997. And we just use that because that was the last time we added a, a fire station. And so we've added uh, about 26 and a half square miles to the city. Um, about every nine square miles is when you would add a fire station if you're just trying to cover the same geographic area. So with this, we're, we're a little bit behind, but with the addition of station 15 and 16, the new stations coming on within the next uh, 18 months to two years, we, we will feel better about that in terms of the coverage. Um, so we'll still be able to get there faster, but there's still, you know, it's still an increased call volume every year, uh, three times the population growth. I want to circle back to a term you use, the ISO rating. Right. We don't have a slide for that, and we've talked about the insurance factor through yeah. all this. Explain, even with the challenges that LFR faces, LFR still improved its ISO rating. Yeah, so we lost some points in coverage because of the way the geography is, but we gained some points because some things that we were always doing that didn't count, they now realize they count. So fire prevention efforts, investigation, um, code enforcement, you know, those pieces before they got very little credit, um, now they get more credit. And so, uh, and the fact that we're accredited through um, the fire service, uh, the Commission on Fire Accreditation International, uh, because we're accredited, they allow us to look at some data that we provide to them. So it's not always just road miles. They kind of look at your performance versus just where draw a circle around a station and then look at performance. So we did okay, but if we weren't to add these stations, we would be um, we would be uh, potentially liable in terms of losing that uh, that performance again. So and again, this is. This is the help of a village. It's dispatch. It's the the location water, of fire hydrants. Water, yeah, water, water pressure. Hydrants, yep. And yep. the city's responsibility in all this too. Yep. So absolutely. Now, using this, do you have goals for 2018? Will that be Will that be something in here that? Yeah. Well, our goals included? are going to be very simple. Um, we need to get our apparatus and our stations still in order. Um, we've made good progress um, so far in terms of some additional fire apparatus and of course, you know, the multiple stations we're either adding or, or remodeling and relocating, that's going to help. But we still have, you know, apparatus that are still um, way past their frontline lifespan that we need to um, solve. So in a sense, we still need nine fire engines 
a new hazmat unit and one truck like today, and that's just too much for uh, the budget to handle. So we're gonna look for a very fast paced incremental fix to that. So we'll be asking for that at council and, and we'll see where we go. Uh, the other one is try and pick at least one station, um, probably every biennium and focus on that older station that, that's not due to be removed um, or replaced, but go in and back and invest in that structure to get it back to a healthy, a healthy state. So um, we're always asking for medics, um, the, but the but the as well we would say the uh, the city council could be kind enough to give me a hundred tomorrow, and it would take me years to recruit that because it's just hard to fill those positions due to the applicant pools and then how long it takes to train them and get them in the field to do service. So we'll be asking for positions too, but but they're they're kind of incremental knowing that you could give us more but we couldn't fill it anyway so we're trying to be realistic with what we think we could do moving forward so 2017 was a was a really fun year in terms of being able to christen fire engines and yep. trucks and new stations going up and right. it was it was a fun year and we it was it was there to build on and yeah. for 2018 well we're not done yet um, we'll be opening a new station, Station 11, which is a relocation, should be opening around mid-April. So we're hoping to do a little bit of marketing for that and invite the, the public to come out for, you know, opening a new station. And so that'll be kind of fun. That's a new, uh, a new one for us. And then the other stations will kind of fall in a rapid sequence after that. So we're going to be busy opening new stations, which is a fun problem to have. Good bet. And this will be available eventually on... LFR, Lincoln.ne.com. Yeah, the, the, the annual report should be done within the next 30 days, and we just make sure City Hall and everybody's seen it first, and Council give them first, first shot to, mm -hmm. to look at it in case they have questions, and once they're okay with it, we, we put it out to the public, and everything's transparent. So, But you get the first shot at it here yeah. on LNKTV. Yeah. Thank you, Chief, very yeah. much. And thanks, okay. everybody, for watching Thank us you. today.